Hello, hello, Saturday afternoon, and I am excited to be here and share some great things that I love about One Stroke Painting. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This is a Donna DeBerry channel. Um, I am going to share some good product with you today, paint with you today, and teach you some things that will make your painting experience with One Stroke better, and also give you some tips and tricks um, to stenciling. And I have all kinds of wonderful stencils that I think that you will love. Hello, Deborah. Um, I have a code for you to get a discount on onestroke.com. All right. So am I backwards? That's what I need to know. <laughs> I'm going to switch it. I think I'm backwards. Um, I would think that I wasn't, but let's see. Is this right? Am I am I right for you guys now? Um, no, you were. No, it's slowing right. No, you're good. Good. Now you're backwards. <laughs> I I didn't do it. I didn't wait long enough for you guys to get on. Okay, you are backwards now. Go back to your first set. I think I'm right now. Thank you for your help, guys. I'm good now. Okay, so this is a deal. Everything I'm showing you today through the 27th. What is today? Is it already the 28th? What day are we living? No, today to the end of the midnight tonight. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I knew um, I'm going a little crazy today. So today's the 27th. So you're going to get um, on Winster.com. $10 off any $50 or more order that you put through. So you can do two $50 orders and use it $10 on each order. But I just want you to know, it's only good to midnight tonight. And when you go to check out, there's a place to put a code. Do not pay before you put your code in because we can't fix it. Okay. So it's 9242. So put it in there. And when you're checking out, okay, so this is um, a special code through tonight. And I, I want to share with you some um, products that I will then paint and show you some stencil tips. Thank you. Hubby just turned on the fireplace here in North Carolina. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we are and such good weather here in Florida. So I feel blessed, but I feel bad for those who are still suffering. A lot of people getting better. Um, I want to show you, first of all, a kit. It comes in a box. It's a Let's Paint One Stroke with Donna DeBerry. This is Wreaths of the Month. So if you're out there, I've got a couple different things. We've got the A to Z kit for absolute beginners who really want to learn. Or if you're out there and you're painting with me and you want to do 50 different flowers. I just want you to think about something. How would you like to have a teaching guide in front of you, the paintbrush that I use, all the paint colors I used, and you are going to get 50 lessons. I just went and looked at my lessons um, yesterday and it's right here on YouTube. It's uh, plaid crafts with Donna DeBerry and you will find the A to Z of one stroke flowers, flower painting. And Every single one of those 50 flowers in that kit is called the A to Z paint, um, the A to Z one stroke floral painting kit. Okay. So as it comes in a wood box, it's got 50 different teaching guides and they're actual size strokes with me. So um, we've sold out, but we've got more on the way. And I want you to know that it's, it's one of the really good kits for you to try all kinds of different flower petals. But I think people aren't realizing that if you go to the YouTube site where it shows Plaid, which is the paint company, Plaid Crafts, and then look at Plaid Crafts on a Dewey. I just write that in on YouTube and it will take you right to these 50 lessons. So just sit there and kind of do it with me. I, there's an intro on in each one that drives me crazy. So speed past my intro and watch the lesson. <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure you know that. Uh, excited to learn. Yes. Thank you. Well, this is, if you just want to take it to another step where people are saying, how do I know like that painting behind me? How do I know how to design and where the flowers go and where the leaves go? 
And many, many of my really good uh, painters out there that are teachers or just really good artists that everybody loves on our Facebook group, they all said, if you want to learn that and learn a multitude of different flowers and designs with Donna, do the do the wreath of the month class. Because what happens, Kit, what happens is that you have a different wreath for every month. So it's seasonal and you can paint it on a canvas. You don't have to paint it on wood having the issue with that. Okay. So, I mean, little things like when I'm painting a vine and you don't know where to put leaves, I take my hand and I go this way or this way all along the vine. So wherever this finger is pointing or my thumb, that's the direction that you're going to do a leaf. And then you can turn it this way and this way all along your vine. I just had my assistant years ago. She was, you know, she's one of my educators and she was over that department. And she said, I want you to come see. I painted my breakfast nook. Please come to buy my house. So I went to the house and, I, and it was really beautiful painting. But I sit there and I didn't know what to say to her because it looked like a Florida hurricane and all the leaves went the exact same way. So that's when I came up with, listen, I took in one section and painted two one stroke leaves an opposite way and everything looked good in that section. And she went, oh, so sometimes it's just two little strokes. All right. So uh, the painting, I'm trying to get back to it after being gone for 20 years. Debbie, I think I, I wrote to you before. I am so thrilled that you are coming back and doing this for you because right now things are kind of sucky out there and you know, God blesses us. He wants us to feel joy. He wants us to pray and talk to him. He wants us to have something that builds our spirit. And so we read the scriptures every morning and not sometimes short, but what it does is it just gives us a boost for the day. And I, I'm not saying that painting is as good as scriptures, but I tell you, painting is better than drugs because <laughs> some people that are very depressed and they think they need some of this on, on top of that, if you absolutely need it, painting takes your mind away from your woes for a little bit, but I want to just show you this. Kit. All right. So one thing that happens in most of these kits um, it's therapy for sure. Gilbert would tell you because he's been struggling and his painting is amazing. And he, uh, Gilbert, I saw you had over 5,000 uh, views on your TikTok. You are rocking it. I'm so proud of you. And riding your bike and getting out of your house. That's a struggle. Everybody has struggles, guys. Everybody has something that's difficult for them. I know that. But I just want you to think about um, self improvement educating yourself, taking time for yourself. Um, thank you, my friend. I, listen, Gilbert, I love you. I'm proud of you. You blow me away every time you paint something. And I have to tell you, um, Gilbert has shared a lot with us. And we're really proud of seeing him push himself to do some things that are really hard for um, many of us have really hard things to deal with. Um, but it's a mindset. And sometimes that still isn't enough, right, Gilbert? But I'm just thrilled to see you doing good. Um, so I want you to know in these kits, there is a hand painted folder that I paint for every one of these kits. Now I have painted thousands thousands of these folders and inside of them is where what you get inside my kids um and you can go see the price there I, i'm not going to spout off prices because i'm not real sure all right that's not my part okay but in here it tells you a little hints about um uh, the wreaths that we're going to paint now you can paint these on wood we still have some of these wood wreaths available and we did it where you paint one on each side. So all you need is six wreaths for the year to hang on your door. But I want you to think about painting it on a canvas and hang it over your fireplace. There's all kinds of places, but see there's different seasons and different looks. All right. And all the way through Christmas. Oh, thank you, Linda. I, I have to work hard to create for you guys. And, and um, it's part of my passion. I said, when I lost my daughter, she died with no cause of death. She was out at college at BYU at our, our church college. And 
her heart quit for no reason. She she walked, she hiked up Y Mountain, up a mountain on Tuesday and died Friday. And there was no cause of death on her death certificate. And people say that's absolutely not possible. Well, I wish it wasn't possible. But you know what? Um, the blessing is, besides I know I'll see her again. I know where she is. And, and I know she's there watching over my grandbabies. But I have to tell you, um, the thing that helped me through that is I would paint just so that it wasn't like my daughter's dead, my daughter's dead. Like I would just lose myself into my painting just for a little bit. Um, so Gilbert says, so thankful for all my one stroke friends and you have a lot of them. Um, I've been blessed with painting and has helped me and helped me with my anxiety. Thank you. I'm glad you shared that. I couldn't do it without my faith in God and all my amazing friends. Gilbert, I love how people in this painting industry and the One Stroke family love you. <laughs> and I have to tell you, um, Gilbert has had a really hard time of leaving his home and getting outside of his house. So we did classes online and we were doing an elite course. And um, I worried for Gilbert because you had to do a demonstration live in front of everybody and teach a class. I have to tell you, I was at all because Gilbert got on there. He has such confidence in front of, they were all women that time, such confidence that he stood there, demonstrated. He uh, was teaching a class for everybody. And even the best part, Gilbert, that impressed me about how you did in your, serve, in your course is that then he had to critique other people. And his critiques, I just sit there and went, let Gilbert talk because Gilbert did so good. He inspired and encouraged these women. And that's why so many of them are his buddies today. So, um, and he's a, a rock star at face painting. <laughs> okay, so let me share something with you. There are 12 reusable teaching guides. They're coded. So you can, one for every month, so you can paint right on this, take a wet paper towel or a baby wipe and wipe it right off. So I'm out, out there talking to all you people who maybe don't know much about One Stroke. A lot of you people have painted with me a long time, so you do know. This was February, so it has one, two, three, three different kinds of roses on here. And so you paint and practice over and over till you get this. And then look at this. Here's March. And those were those real pretty um, like leprechaun flowers. And then look at this wreath. So it's all kinds of tulips. All right. So we're going. And this is another all-time favorite. They little teeny daisies. And look how pretty that wreath turned out. All right. So I want you to see that there's 12 of these. Um, and my birthday month in December, this is one of my favorite where it was pine cones. All right. So look at this. When people walk by the room, they stopped where I was painting this at Plaid and they went, oh, did you just paint that? <laughs> they said, yes. But part of it was amazing is that these were like 20 something inches wide, the wreaths. But so besides this hand painted folder, and I love that you keep them in the box because all your paints are there. Your floating mediums there. We use gold in some of the fall months and Christmas. We have, and treasure gold alone is like $5.99. You get a set of brushes in here. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember everything you get in here. I don't remember if there's a sponge or something, but all of this, it'll tell you when you look at it online. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, twelve. Twelve two 12, 12 ounce bottles are folk art multi-surface. So just think about it. If this is the first thing you try, you've got guides to practice on top of my stroke. Like this is like coming down at home with you. You have 10 of my most used brushes. There's flat brushes, there's scruffy brushes and liners. And you have floating medium, which we use instead of water treasure gold to accent and do pretty painting and then this is to remind you that i love you there's a heart right a heart wreath and 12 teaching guides and these lessons listen to this there are 12 lessons on the folk art on 
plaid crafts with Donna Dewberry. 12 lessons with you painting each one of these wreaths. Now those A to Z tutorials are short, but so they're about 10 to 15 minutes. These lessons are the whole lesson, painting from the beginning to the end, but you have everything that you need right there in front of you while you're painting with me. So you can stop me and start it as you practice on the guide in front of you. So anyway, I hope I inspired y'all. Try that out. Thank you for your kindness and encouragement. I really enjoy your spiritual sharing as well as your very special. Oh. Well, thank you. We just, my husband worried on Patreon. Uh, it's Mark and Donna Dewberry, the world of painting with Mark and Donna Dewberry. And we have like a podcast and Mark and I are together on there. Um, and during once each week on Wednesdays where we are talking and sharing with you on your painting goals, how to price your, and people uh, ask us lots of questions and we share that. Um, and I would just like you, I, you put a pledge down. So even if you pledge $10 and watch us for a month, I'm, and I really want you to see how we work on inspiring you and helping you because we have people that aren't teachers. We have people that don't do craft fairs. And then we have people that do do craft fairs and do teach and want to make more money. And I put so much in there, Mark and I do for you. And, and so that's the podcast where you ask us questions that we help you and we are spiritual and, and as inspirational, we try um, and from all the mistakes and good that we've learned over the years of painting together. And so um, Mark's managed me from all these years. He was a builder. And then when the building industry went kaput in Florida, um, it was we painted and we got lots of people painting with us. So Gilbert, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And thank you, Donna, if you had never crossed path. I'm not sure where I'd be today. It's God's tender mercies. And timing is always perfect. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I love you guys. I think I needed you today. I've just been really grumpy. I don't know why. And my husband goes, wow. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so when I come on here and talk to wonderful people, that, that inspired me too. I appreciate you guys. I want to do one thing. I want to, excuse me guys, before I start painting, I want to turn on, I had to unplug my lights and I need to put them back on so y'all can see well. There we go. Woo! Right. All right. You truly uplift us. With, oh, thank you. I've been really busy lately because some weeks I'm really crazy uh, busy with other stuff. Came across you by accident. Well, hello, Mr. George. <laughs> Y'all been seeing George with us a lot recently. And he's been Steve. Kajinsky, I can't say it. Anyway, I will probably after this week where Steve and myself and George are doing a workshop this weekend in Florida and we're doing painting special roses and backgrounds with me. Uh, then resin, 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 putting resin, how to, and everybody physically doing the resin with us on top of a tray that we paint the rose on. And then with Steve Shaginsky, Shaginsky, huh? Steve's going to kill me for butchering it. But Steve's going to be there. He's famous. He's an airbrush and scroll pinstriping um, guru in his industry. And he's going to be with us. And he's going to be teaching my campers and some other people how to do that. And we're going to try to show you all the pictures of that. And that's this Friday and Saturday. So if you're in anywhere near Florida and you want to come, I think we had four spots left. We would love to have you guys come join us. Um, anyway, so, and if you can't join us, George and I are going to do a little workshop online for y'all and a couple of weeks after that. So today, what I'm going to be painting, uh, great price too, yeah, it's $99 and includes lunch on Friday. And you're going to get all the resin and everything included. So it's a good deal. Um, I want to share with you some deals about stenciling and how you can do a great background. And then when you 
how you can stencil an insect in two steps. How cool is that? And then just doing, I want you to see the dimension of using stencils on top of cool backgrounds uh, and making all this happen very quickly. Okay. I have all kinds of information I want to share with you, but I'm just going to today, let's just work on stenciling. And if you go to Donna Dewberry's with an S official one stroke group on Facebook, you will see all the schedules and everything that I do, especially all you guys who are YouTubers and you don't know anything about that. Please go under about Donna and it'll tell you how to get to my web uh, website and how to get to our Facebook group. Because on the Facebook group, we have lots of instructors and myself and people who come on like George and my daughter, Amanda, just did some pouring some resin the other day. And we teach you lots of good things. It's all free right there for you to come see. Um, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate that. Um, it's the George that's been with you since 2000. Oh, hello, George. <laughs> George has taught and uh, been teaching in, I think, middle school, you said. I'm hoping it's not high school, middle school. Middle school, they needed you, George, for all those years. And George became a certified instructor. And um, after, I think, almost 40 years or more than 40 years. So um, George is my buddy. <laughs> so I have two Georges that are now involved um, with one stroke. So that's good, um, Mr. George. Um, and I haven't seen you lately. So come by and say hi. So what I want you to see is let's look at a couple other things really quick with that $50 deal. There's lots of ways to spend money. First of all, those are sets of brushes and you have two options. This is my 10 most used brushes. So I call these the value pack. All right. So then I have, um, I have my painter sponges, check those out. But then I want you to see, this is the best brushes that I have made. And these are um, my signature brushes. And so they're wrapped brushes, which are the, all the um, specialty brushes. And those, I created all those uh, scruffy brushes. That's my own creation. And then um, all of these, my brushes are actually different than other brushes that are three quarter or 16 or 12, because my bristles, the spring and the length and all of them are different than any in the normal industry right now. But so this is um, a $39.95 for 13 high quality brushes. So I just wanted to show that with you. And uh, Glenda, hello, hello. And you are love. Thank you. Um, so I want you to see, thank you, Elaine. Um, I'm going to be working today with these um, stencil brushes. And what I want you to see and listen, I've always used those little rough, dry, like brushes, and they're really stiff, and you have to do all this to it, and then they'll slip under the stencil sometime if you're not super careful. And so many people, I really want you to watch how I pick up paint and stencil today, because so many people make such a muddy mess, and they're right in front of me. And I'm saying step by step and demonstrating on a screen right in front of them, and they still do it. They still make a mess. So... But so many of you have written and said, oh, my gosh, I can stencil with these brushes. So let me tell you what's different. These are synthetic nylon bristles. And see the different sizes? I did a 12. My friend um, Paula makes these for me. And uh, we put together a set where I have a 12, a 16, and a 20. And when I'm doing an all-over print like this, this one, with all the leaves, I use that uh, 20 because it just makes it happen really fast. Um, so, and then these little ones, if I want to get in here and do his legs, look at his little legs and antenna. I need to get this in there without touching anything else, but look at the detail I got in my stencil. I started making stencils this last year and I'm in love <laughs> with making stencils and I'm making y'all crazy because I keep coming out with new ones and you guys keep buying them. So check these out. They're sold as a set and um, that's what I'm going to be using today. So, and the other thing that's really important is that you have your tools. And so I'm going to be using my double loader today. So I want you to see that in this double loader, it's got a lid that pops on so that if I put out my paint 
and I want to, I'm going to show you how to use it. We put floating medium. By the way, there's a cap on top of here. You take that cap off. And then when you're through using it, you put the cap back on. So many people don't know that you take it off and they just put a little bit of floating medium. But the whole thing is to hold your full floating medium. So, and I need more in there. So I use floating medium instead of water. Okay. So uh, you love my double loader with thank you. But the best part is with me having seven children, as soon as I get my paint out or my husband was a builder, as soon as I got things ready, I get a call, run to the bank, go pick up the, the sick child at school. And I would just go, oh, there went all my paint. So what I made, I made a double loading process. And then I made this lid that pops on and you pull off this lid and see the air holes there. You take and dampen this, lay it in there. It keeps the paint moisture. I never I never have taken it 30 days, but I've had a couple of teachers that said it was still good 30 days later. I'm sure that it'd be good like five days later, but you then seal this back and then you pop this in. See these two? But when we're at events and all, I tell people to bring it. We pop this in there. And when we go to lunch and all, we come back, it's still ready for us. Okay. So that's the double loader. It comes with all five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Five is the little lid. Okay. On the floating medium. It also will fit into, let me show you real quick. It will fit into your palette, but not, but not, with, um, not with the lid on it. So you stick it underneath one. See, we stick it under one notch and drop it in the other two notches. And then you spin it and you're ready to go. Okay. So that's my double loader and a palette. But people are confused because this is a palette, but it's a double loading palette. And so when they order it, they order the palette. And that's just this part. Now, so that's been confusing. My daughter said, people are saying, but that's not what I ordered. <laughs> So I just want you to see that we have, I made this palette to put foam plates in. Just like those little picnic uh, wicker things that we used to use. I made, I said, I want it to hold up my foam plate. So when I'm on a ladder or I'm doing wall painting or something, I can put my paper towels in here, some medium or water in those little spots and do my painting up with everything in it. And I made it ergonomically correct for a lefty or a righty, you know, to hold this. I, I'll start using my double loader after this week, and I have to say I missed it. I'm also saving money not buying phone plates. <laughs> yes, with this economy, there's a lot of things that we're thinking of. <clears throat> All right, so what I want to do, <clears throat> All right, so I've shown you brushes and stuff. Here's that B again on the wood. And this has a little cherry blossom video, I mean, a sense on the back. And by the way, I'm going to share with you some of the very most popular stencils that I have. All right. And I'm going to move this down. Thank you for being on. And let me get us all straight here and ready. And I'm upside down. So I'm going to flip it. I know many of you aren't saying this, but I am hot in here, I guess. from Oh, I turned all the lights on. That's why. All right. So I'm going to turn me up so I'm not upside down. And am I left-handed? Am I left-handed or right-handed? Can y'all tell me, please? I'm going to wait a minute because it takes a minute for people to say. I'm left-handed. Okay. All right, there we go. Now I'm right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so what I'm going to share with you, there's a couple of new things I did. One is I did new butterflies, all right? So this is a, a monarch. I want to pull something dark behind it. Okay, so this is a monarch, and I have it in one, two, three sizes, four sizes. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right. So it has the little markings down here. And then I have this butterfly in two sizes. And then I have a side view butterfly. All right. So now when you look at the second one, 
I had to do two for, for many reasons. This can look like a moth, but it is also a butterfly. So I have it in two sizes and they're big. Look, they're way big. All right. And so then I have the side view, a couple of different sizes and a couple of different looks. And then I did dragonflies. All right. So this one has dragonflies and a couple of butterflies and side views. Now what happens here is that this, is the wing coming close to you and this is the wing in the background and if you shadow behind there that that looks like it's lifting off okay so these are two butterflies i'm going to do a demo with one of those butterflies also and you can tell i've used it very well they're also i want to show you that we can put a little fence we have clothesline a clothesline that we put up. Let me take this off. This one I did not create, but I use it a lot. The butterflies are my design. I'll show you mine as we go. But this one, all you do is, I did this with a, <clears throat> some senior um, beautiful homes that they're, they're not very crafty, but every one of these ladies, ladies went, oh my gosh, I will so put that in my laundry room. So we put it on a 10 by 20 and so you just stencil across here and it leaves your pattern of all the white clothing. Then I just paint the clothing in white just by following this. And then you can put these flowers or, or not, but people put the basket and put flowers in the basket instead of clothes. So this is the clothesline, really, really popular. All right. And it's a great class to teach for all you guys who are doing fun little um, classes. But I want you to know that this is a great and amazing different little i did three little outfits i changed and put diapers on some with clothes pins a little bird flying a little diaper over to the clothesline i want you to know that these are great for art shows because so many people will put this in their laundry room but then also you can put it out here and have the picket fence so the picket fence makes a really good add-on to our truck that I'm going to show you and to a um, snowy cabin. We use this fence and we use it for wildflowers. So those are, here's the truck. I want you to see it. These are 16 by 6, 16 and a half by 6. But I want you to see that I put the truck in here. And I just did this truck with uh, flower baskets in it. And so that's one that you can go... You can order the, the Christmas truck, the tree truck, and you can also uh, just paint baskets and other things of flowers inside of it. But I thought, look how cute that would be with the fence in front of it. So what this does is it puts out a pattern for you. And then all I did was fill in the truck, but I've taken all this to my studio, so I don't have it here to show you. But I just want you to know I use, use this a lot with Merry Christmas stencil at Christmas time on 16 by 20s, really fun class because all you're doing is you can write Donna's Flower Shop, put the baskets of flowers in it, put pumpkins in it, but it's a really great truck ready for you. All right, can't wait to go to get my truck in the mail. I know, isn't that fun? I think it's time uh, instead of you teaching and pushing me that I should do art. I know. Uh, think that you're niche and I would love to see you get back into it and he's right okay awesome so I want you to see that and then um one of those are just some that we use all the time I still I'm showing you a couple more I promise I'm going to be painting but it's kind of like fun to let you see what we can do and make that make um really amazing where is i have this in a long skinny one and i was going to use it to show you that i did it for easter this is buffalo plaid and i did it with you can see that i did this black and then i painted a big pumpkin here and so i put it on and i put it on a different color background i did um red and put black buffalo plaids on there but right here in front of me Ah, where is it? I have a long, long one that's this wide. 
Okay, guys, I'm losing it. It's going to be right under my nose, but it's not right here. Okay, so what it is, is I like it a lot because it's just the strip like this, and it's a smaller version of this, and just a little bit smaller. And I put it with Easter colors, and I go from lavenders to pinks to yellow, um, buffalo plaid, and it was re refunded. Well, Alice, we sold out so many times during Christmas, but I have to tell you, are these in your shop? Yes. Um, and so right now, we just ordered in and we're in stock with the long skinny ones and the 12 by 12. All right. So I use both for different reasons. Like some of it I did. Um, I just cannot believe it was right under my nose and now it's not here. All right. So let me keep on. Um, so this is what I want you to see. This is how we do my books. All right. So I needed books. I've taken the stack, all these books really tall and put a pot of flowers on top of them or ivy falling down. I have put these next to a crystal um, vase full of flowers that were red and black and all. And then what you can also do with this book. So this is what people mostly have problems with getting perspective. And this is one I created so that you could get this is the page edge. And we want it to go back in the straight line. So you get this per perspective of it going backwards. And then this is um, going the other way. And the, this is the spine showing here. You don't see these spines, but you could turn them. But here you do. See, there's a spine. There's a spine. But let me tell you the fun thing about these. You could take this and you stencil. And then you slide it, you stencil this bottom, then you slide it up and stencil again, and you can make a box. So, or a really thick book, or you can make um, a treasure box that you open. So it's like a fun thing. You can turn it either way, okay, and have them going both ways. So this is one of my most used, okay, because I do all kinds of packets that has the jars and flowers in them. And so I have it for spring, fall, val uh, lavenders, roses. I have them in many, many different ways. I uh, wish I could purchase your products at Hobby Lobby to save shipping. I am on a, I know, I know, but um, what I have are things that aren't in the retail store, unfortunately. That makes it hard for some of you. But I can tell you, you can really save with shipping especially with stencils. We have a flat container for the stencils to go in. And if you get two to three stencils at one time, it's just adding a couple of dollars to the each one of the stencils. And sometimes as little as a dollar a stencil, depending on how many that you pick up, just to let you know if you put a packet or some other stuff in it. Um, and then you can always find paint usually at one of your craft stores. But some people aren't in areas where they can get the paint. Um, my grandparents taught me so grateful for something is better not to have in the beginning. Um, all right. So, so look at these jars here again. Remember how I told you how to make the book into a box. Now this stencil, you would stencil the bottom here, slide it up and make a taller jar, or you can stencil the side, move it to the right and make a larger Mason jar. I turned this upside down and made it into a snow globe. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with them. And everybody, even myself, the problem was when they did their vases, they would have one side nice. That's what happens to me. And then the other side doesn't match. So these will make both sides match for you and make it easy for you. Here's another one that I created. And so it puts every segment of the bird there for you. This is a vintage bird set. And so I just put these two little birds on a pocket. Um, or these two birds in the pocket. But these are, um, if you look on Pinterest, these are those vintage looking birds on a branch. And then we broke it up if you want a bigger one on a t-shirt. So you have a single one. You could even make him into a parrot. He kind of looks like a parrot. But we enlarged that one to here. So these birds really help you know where the tail is, the wing is. And some birds have their tails up and some birds have their tails down. And um, I teach you how to draw like that, but I'm just saying. All right. So then I'm going to start painting, I promise. I know y'all don't believe me. All right. There's the jars. All right. 
most soul stencil, believe it or not, because it just has this um, background in the background and um, it fills up a back of a, you know, something you might be stenciling. I'm going to show you the Be Kind, but, um, Be Kind Bumblebee that I was working with. And then here it is. Here's this. Here's an all over writing. All right. That's, see, I just put little bits of it here and there or metallic. All right. And this isn't mine, but it's a very good seller. And it's six by six and a 12 by 12. All right. And so here is my vintage um, Paris. And so all kinds of fun stenciling on here that you can do. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is show you some samples also. And let, let me show what happens here. This is a brand new one that I came out with. And you have to write Donna Dewberry 1 and say that you want this because it's not on my site. All right. It's brand new, hot off the press. And it's a new program where I've created um, for you to be able to do one stencil that gives you borders. So there's one, two, there's a third one there three there is a bunny where you can put in there or not put in there you can do multiple flowers you can do the butterfly flip it and they have two butterflies all right so you're going to get this stencil here's another version okay this is on the 12 by 12 canvas see here's that the polka dot looking border and then that kind of looks like a check somebody thought it was a fence all right, so I, I show you the step-by-step. -step. This is for fun beginner classes, okay? And so it shows you that you can just put this on really quick and make really fun. And as you could call it my bunny stencil if you want to. And this one's $21.95 because you're getting the stencil, which should be arriving next week. You get the stencil and you get... Um, all the step-by-step -step pictures and these creative ideas. You can use just these borders across the note card. You can use just that cluster of flowers. You can use the butterflies, the bunny. You can flip the bunny any way that you want it. And so this is $21.95 and we open up the stencil and we put all the color shots and steps of how you do this as a class so the first step shows you i show you um this background just the blue the citrus the blue back here the yellow the yellow ochre and then the dark green and then the next step is we stencil this stencil on see how that's white i stencil it on really light with all white and then it, that's a, your pattern added all ready to go and then you just start painting okay um so there you go all right so let's let me show you i'm gonna put um right on here let's put a butterfly okay so i'm gonna show you the first thing here is adding one of these butterflies um i can have let's do this butterfly just like this right here all right, so I'm going to pick up, and I'm going to have a paper towel right here by me. All right, and let me show you how we start this. I'm going to tap in here and get white. See, I'm rubbing it in. Dry. The stencil's dry. I'm going to put it right here. Hey, thanks for being on, Jane. All right, so I want you to see that I'm going to make circles left and right. Now, the, the key is... That lots of people get lots of paint and they go like that. Well, what we're doing is going left and right. And what's going to happen is what I can lift this and see if it's looking like it's showing up. All right. You can see it. Y'all might not can see it. You can use another color. But I'm going to come here to the paper towel and wipe it off. Love your stencils, Donna. Thank you. All right. So I want you to see. Let's do it a little bit darker so y'all can see. I don't think y'all can see that too well, but I'm going to come in here with my colors and I'm going to, because it's separated, 
I'm going to go right here. Look at this. You can get both colors. You split it. You work it in. You get it and you work it in. And this is um, an eight flat, one of my brushes. All right, so I'm going to come right in here. And so I know exactly how to paint in here because I've got the white already there. Your pattern's already there. Okay, so we're going to come right across here and back to the body. And so what I'm going to do, you can you can also leave. See, there's white right there. I can leave white in there. My daughter, my granddaughter just made $100 doing these stencils. And butterflies on one of the glitter backgrounds. And she spent a lot of time. I'm showing you a very quick and easy way to do it. Okay. So we're going to come right here. Look. I can then also see that I have this area right here. All right. So this every I can see there. I don't think y'all can, but I can see everywhere where my stencil had given me some detail. Okay. Now I'm going to get a little bit more pink. And we're going to go right here and touch it. So the next beautiful thing is that people tell me, Donna, I can never make my butterfly both sides because butterflies mimic each other side to side, their wings, their dots, everything side to side. And if you can't, and it's hard for me sometimes too, so I fake it out and put something there so you can't see that I didn't do it exactly like you have it in a flower or something. So look at this. We're going to come down and then I can come right in here. I can see through here. I can do another stroke in here. All right. Now, really quickly, you've got all the segments where they need to be. You can come right in here. And I, oh, I didn't get licorice. I'm going to come in. I know I pulled it. All right. So remember this. I don't know. So we got a lot of new people in here. This is 50, $10 off $50 orders. Okay. On our website. And we are going to put some licorice in here. All right. So I'm going to show you that the double loader makes such a difference in how you paint. And we're going to tap it. We're going to pick up. Now this is right here. We can put all these steps in here to make this cute little butterfly. And I need a script liner. All right. So it's a fun little butterfly. You can do any color. Okay. And now watch what happens here. We can touch and then come around because it's right there for you. Oh my gosh. I have some caffeine. You can probably tell. All right. So and you can also, I, I'm kind of leaving it pastel, but you can also come in here and just do a little bit of outlining because everything's in there perfect for you. And we're using a two skirt liner. Isn't that kind of fun? And all right. The other thing I tell you to do is we can come right in here, maybe even with some purple. And we're going to come right in here. And then do a few. You can use your script liner or you can come in here. And pull a little bit of dark in here. All right. So see, just a little bit, and you have a butterfly that was really quick and easy, All right? Thank you. All right, and so I can also come in here and put a little bit of purple here and there. There's diaxazine purple. 
with my eight. I, ha I did these blue, but I can add a few purple in here. And I would do this to pull the butterfly in there. All right, see how I'm bringing that purple in? But you can make it match any painting. So this is just a painting I already had. Okay. Now that's that. Now let me show you. I have another painting. I just wanted to see how this is. We're going to use this all over cherry blossom. Number one selling, six, uh, six by six and a 12 by 12. All right, so I'm going to come in here with the six, the 16. And let's see what color. I'm thinking I'll use a little bit of the darker. All right, so this is dioxazine purple. All right, I'm going to come right here, rub it off. Okay, that's rubbing off a lot of the goofy part. Okay, so I can see now, I do this all the time after I finish my painting and I went, boy, that needed something else. But see how I can see there's no flower behind there? And if there is, you can take and wipe it off while it's still wet. So I wanted to put darker here. Okay, darker on the edges, a little bit darker. All right, a little bit darker here. A little bit darker here. Okay, so look what happens. See how that added to it? All right, so let's come over here. I can flip this and have this coming out of this bouquet. Okay, left and right. You turn it both ways so it goes into every crevice. To the left, to the right. And then we put a little teeny bit in here. Okay, so look what happens. See how that looks like it comes out of the bouquet. So see, it looks kind of blank up there, but look when I start adding this. All right, so let's add, now look what I can do. I can go right on top of here, dioxazine purple, let's wipe it off. And I can do it really light where I barely push down. I want you to see this. I'm barely pushing. It's going to come in here where there's no flowers. Let's put some of this in here. Okay, and in here a little bit. Okay, now look, it's really pastel. All right, so now look what's going to happen. I can put, I'm holding it still. Now I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. Let's do a deep there, there, a couple of dark ones. A little dark up here. Okay. Now look what happens. So you have faded and darker. See, now I want a little bit on the green. And all you do, I just want, if you want to, I think it's fine there. But I could take water and I could just take that right back off the leaf while it's wet. You got to do that right away because we're only doing a light coat and it dries fast. But there we go. All right. And sometimes, like I said, if it's right on top of here, you can wipe it off right away. But didn't that make a difference? She would come today. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Now, this does have some little birds. See the little birds? Those are kind of fun uh, instead of butterflies. All right. Now, I want you to see, we're just going to take, and I love doing this one. I've done it a few times, so y'all probably seen it. Um, I'm going to take this stencil, and it goes on a 12 by 12, pretty perfect. But um, you can, this is Mason M for Mark Dewberry. You don't have to put that in there. We just put, you can just do the Mason. Hey, this uh, my birthday is actually November, but not 1836. And so I, I drew this out and then the vintage, you can turn these all kinds of ways and the Eiffel Tower. That is a lot of work. 
um, as a stencil, but it's not a lot of work. I can't wait for you to design a bicycle stencil. I know, but I have my bird stencil coming next, which is hummingbirds and blue bluebirds, all kinds of cute songbirds and more. Okay. And it's almost done. So I got to do that first, but I'm working on the bike. That little teeny bike stencil we have sells super good, but it's little guys. It's like that big. Um, so let, let me tell you, we are going to use, I want to show you how fun metallic looks. Okay. So we are using some color shifts. So this is a pink color shift. I still have not showed y'all how to use the double loader. And here's a green color shift. So I'm screen showing these ideas. Yeah, that makes me happy. Oh, these, these paints are almost gone. Oh, I got another color. Now this even goes on glass, guys. Okay, and it stays. Like, look, I put some of the purple in this one. See that? And that's what we just did this week on, here it is. I just saw, where is it? Oh, right here. See this color. So this one is, oh, Orchid Flash. These are called Color Shift. And see, when you look online, it's Color Shift, okay? So this is, um, purple flash. So purple flash, orchids, the pink, and then this is green flash. So it gives you a flash. It's like a lot of motor cars that drive by and you're going, Hey, that car is golden. You go, no, it's purple. <laughs> All right. So what I want to share with you is let's pick up some licorice. Now I'm going to use these brushes have to be dry. So I think I'm going to use my 20, all right? And I'm going to get into the licorice, all right? And then I'm going to go right here and take it off. Now, every time I have to come over here and get that, because we want just a little bit to be there. Now, let me tell you, you can get any 50-50 heavyweight t-shirt, sweatshirt, and see this right here? You can do it right on your shirt and it sucks it up immediately and makes the best, the best stencil for clothing. I mean, stenciling is beautiful in clothing. I did, I sold a crazy amount of 75 stencils and one set on Facebook Live because I made a shirt every 15 minutes with stencils. And when I do this stencil, I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna do some hydrangea right there with it. So see, this is, see how this left, right? And it's really nice because it's a big, heavy stencil brush. Okay, now what you're gonna see is that it doesn't goop out. Okay, this is my Paris stencil in stock, ready to ship to you guys. So check out some of my designs. And I'm going to do something different. I always do a rose. So I'm going to do a hydrangea on here for you. And I've done this into a shirt a few times with the hydrangea. So left and right. Okay. Oh, I'm missing this whole section. Wiggle, wiggle, circle, circle, circle. Okay, now look what happens. Perfect. All right. So look at this no gooping under the stencil right here i went over because i didn't see that the what do you call it the butterfly there see it's not messy you can see little teeny crisscrosses or crisscrosses look at that all right so that was a lot of work for us to do michelle and i do these together but i have to tell you when you stencil it, it comes out that good isn't that amazing all right so now i'm going to pick up some of the purple flash and I'm going to come right here. Actually, I don't want that black in there. So I'm going to take this off and let it dry. I'm going to dry out that brush. It's going to sit for a few minutes and I'll use another one. All right. So we're going to get the purple. Okay. So I'm going to come right here and we're going to do vintage. Okay. Left, right, circle, circle. Okay, now what I want to show you 
is that I'm doing all of this here. Okay, now let's get a little bit of that. Oops, I got a lot of that Cezine Purple. You're going to go right here, rub it off some. And I want you to see that you can go right across the bottom. Okay, now look what that looks like. See how it's got purple to, to uh, lighter? Okay, so now I can go in and get some white. And I come over here and wipe that off. Okay, I'm making circles over here. Now look at this. I'm going to tip the top edges of this vintage. And I gave you some shading. So light, the metallic, and then dark. Okay, now I can come in here and get that pink which was orchid, remember? Okay, so look what's gonna happen here. I could put some gold, but I'm gonna put a little bit of pink. Ah. All right, there's my Paris. Come on, there you go. So I can come here, put a little bit up there. That's just putting a little bit of that metallic across here. A little bit of metallic across here. I'm going to make this bumblebee down here. Okay. Now let's come over here and let's get some green flash. Okay, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of licorice. I hope you guys are liking this, seeing what you can do also. All right, let's pick it up. Oh. All right, so I put a little bit of highlight on that Eiffel Tower, which is metallic. This is all metallic. All right. I'm going to do a couple more things and then we will paint my hydrangea here. All right, so I'm going to just line this back up. You can tape this and just lift it to see how everything's going to look, but I just want y'all to see it kind of dramatic. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to pick up some pink and white. This is magenta and white without, um, whatever you call it, without metallic. Right, left, right. This is where I would put that big uh, brush. The 20. But I got it wet. I don't want it wet. Okay, I'm going to come in here and wipe that off. And I'm going to get some licorice. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. And because this had pink in it, it's going to be kind of a brown color. Left, right. Okay, I can put a little bit more licorice. Okay, so remember how we did a little bit of light of the other? So look. Let's go across here and get a little bit and a little bit of that. I'm going to let that look. See? Now... So I want to paint all in here. So let's get a little bit of green. And we're going to do a dragonfly right there. Okay, and here's a moth. We can get a little bit of teal in there. All right. And Bella. Beautiful. And, okay, so really quick, I know I've done this a few times, but I think that you guys will lag seeing 
uh, how this turns out to be a yummy looking okay right. oh I think I messed that up but we're gonna lift it up anyway there we go all right so that's the pair of stencil so I've shown you a couple of different ones I'm gonna get this out and then we're gonna paint a hydrangea okay so I'm going to put some purple in here so purple with a little bit of white okay this is a 12 flat. Okay, so you see the purple in some other places here. I'm going to put a little bit in here. Okay, and then I'm going to bring some pink in this bottom part to give it some different shading. Okay. You all having a good time yet? I've been on a while. I hope I've inspired you. My Paris Hydrangea table, yes. And I have to tell you, Pat, that's what inspired me to create this. Hello, hello. Now, what I want you to see, guys, is that I'm going to pick up like a 16 flat. When you get my value pack, the 16 is a separate brush. So when that's my uh, basic value pack, it doesn't have a 16. A 16 does come into the um, signature set all right so i'm going to come in here and i love that we have these other colors now let me show you how we use this double loader we dampen our brush and i want to do one third sap and two thirds citrus and i'm going to go back and forth back and forth i can also dip a little bit of teal all right and on the citrus i could dip a little bit of white okay and then we want this brush two-thirds full okay so then when i'm coming here let me show you what we want to do we're going to come right in here now i need some medium see i dip into the medium go right back here because i want it to feel like butter like it's going really nice and smooth try not to wreck that whole stencil i just did and i'm going to pull a stem here now let's pick up some more go right here and we're going to make a little brush there. All right. And I'm going to turn this brush. Now, see, if you're out there and yours is looking muddy, it's just because you have to pick up the brush. This controls you. So you're double loading. And then you come here, you work it in. I might dip some white to work it in. But you just have it all right there. And then I want it to feel like butter when we're stroking. So we just dip a little bit of floating medium and there we go. All right. Now I can also put a little bit of purple. Watch this. A purple in here. And I can go just like this. It's not showing yet. Let's see. There we go. All right. And then I pull a stem right in there. Okay, so I've done the same look on a on a t-shirt, and that's all I do. I didn't even like move it around and create my own thing. I went straight for my stencil. Okay, so <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is we take that twelve, and I'm going to pick up purple. This is dioxazine purple. I'm gonna go on the outside edge because I don't want it to be. A solid edge I want it to be slip slapping along here so it looks like it's got little bits little blossoms poking out here and there can you see that so I take just the corner and I slip slap it okay so I'm going to start like this then I go flat 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 slip slap slip slap all right but now let's pick up some white I picked up white and the purple and I'm just coming right back in here slip slap slip slap and get some pretty color in here so I can come back with purple if I want a little bit darker in here 
All right, so we're going to come all in here. And then I'm going to put some pink in there. Let's go the same thing over here. Okay, and let's put pink in here, magenta. And we do a crescent moon. See how I'm doing that moon shape along here? And same thing here. Okay, then I can come right in here with white. So we're going to put a little bit of magenta. Okay, see how that gives you some pretty looks? Let's pick up purple in here. See how that separates that flower from this flower? And we're going to take pink in there now. You like that? Okay. All right. So now look how pretty that would be on a shirt. All right. So now I'm going to come right in here and split, work this in, pick up some teal. All right. So I'm going to come right in here and bring this right around these insects. All right, so you're just going to come up, put some strokes. I can put some of that purple in there. Now watch, just purple flash. Purple flash, purple flash. There we go. See, look how pretty that ends up looking. Okay, I always do roses, so I just wanted to put some purple in there. And I think that this could use a little bit of purple along here. Just to give it a little bit of just that pink over there. See how that purple pulled it over there. All right, and I can come in here. And brought some purple right there. Right there. Now I've got to do my B for you. All right. See how that brought purple every... Oh, right here. So. There we go. Anyway, I am just want to share with you that we... Okay. All right. And then you sign it. And you all saw that was pretty easy, right? Now, <clears throat> let's pick up. I already did a truck the other day, so go check out that truck. I think you'll like it. And then from here, here's the mason jar. All right, so I'm going to do an, uh, a teal-looking blue jar. So I'm wiping this off, and this is what you do. You get the edge, then you come down here with the edge. And so these jar stencils are wonderful. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it. There's my pattern, quick and easy. All right. All right. Now, what I want you to see is that I'm going to now take, <clears throat> I'm going to get a little bit of floaty medium, a little bit of that teal, and you can put it on a plate. If I put some teal right here, and I dip my floaty medium and go right here, and, and work right over to that, okay? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to come here. You're going to do the wiggle of the jar. Because sometimes you don't cover the inside of the jar. 
but we're going to put some stems in there. So we will. All right. So come right back here and pick up more. Now what's going to happen is whatever color you want this to be, you're going to come here and go all the way down. Okay. More medium. And we come around this way. Oops. I went up too high. All right. So you're going to come all the way down. Now what I like is when I do the jars, you can have another jar behind here and you see the jar through this jar, which is a really cool leg. What a retreat. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. That, Jan, that makes me happy, happy, happy. Because you were so talented. I watched your YouTube the other day and thought, she is just so good. You inspire me too. Okay, so this is the key. That's the back inside of the jar. All right, so I want you to think about that. So Because it's confusing. Your eyes can do tricks with you. All right, so then we're going to come. Here's the inside. I mean, the front edge of the jar. Okay, now we're going to do a B on here too, but I want you to see what's going to happen first. Now I am going to make a coating on top of this, but you have to do this first. Then you're going to come right here and get your sap. Look, I split this brush and over here you don't split it. Okay, so I'm picking up teal and working it in right in this in that second cubby. This controls you so you don't have a muddy mess. So I don't let you go more than two inches and you can make great things happen, right? <laughs> You're welcome, sweetie. All right. So I want you to see we're coming here and we're coming there. We can also have... Be sure you don't come out of the side of the jar. <laughs> Not that I haven't ever done that before, but, you know, it means water would leak out there. And I don't put a lot of greenery inside because it makes the water nasty and sour, right? But sometimes I do. All right. So then um, we do dip into the floating medium because we want... Um, this to feel like butter really smooth strokes okay now i like to come out here and have it come down here medium because we're on paper okay oopsie there we go all right now one thing i like to do as I like to come up here before we do our bumblebee, I like to do long, slender fern. Jeez. Okay. And then another one. I'm just making them up as we go, but I just want you to see that. Watch this. Now that's heavy. That's lighter. The, fl the floating medium did all that. Now I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to come here and I'm going to clean this brush out with the floating medium. Okay. Okay. Now I wipe it on the paper towel and now I paint with this. So what you're going to see by this. Oh, come on. I want you to see that we can do long, slender, shadow, shadow in the background. And you can go right across here and put it way in the back. There we go. Let's get some more. Okay, so see how that's in the background? Okay, now, before I do the butterfly, I'm going to dry this.
This is my heat pen. It's on our website. And great when I'm doing this glass painting and I want to heat this up really good. Okay, now my bubble bead is going to touch this, so I don't want it to smear it. Okay, so let's do the B. Now, I did this for Pinner's Convention because um, my whole theme was be kind. So I wanted to say put the B there, kind. So you have a bumblebee, or here was the Florida Georgia bumblebee. So you could have put that bumblebee facing the word kind, be grateful, be humble and kind. All right. And so I have big B, small B. Okay. So what I want to do is we can put a small one way down there. But what I'm going to do is have this big B coming down. Okay. So I like to put a little bit. Oh, let's put a teeny bit of a red or uh, orange. All right, so I'm going to use my 16, and I'm going to put some yellow. So I'm going to come right here. Now, what I want you to see is that, see where the black is? That's where the black's going to be when I lift this up. But right now, I'm putting this there to get so you know where to put that. Okay. Then I'm going to come over here with some white, which is not going to show. And so I put white right in here. So what I have to do is I have to get a little bit of licorice to make some gray. Nope, that's not working. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pull from here and pull from here. Okay, so now I'm going to lift this and so see what we have there. That's the only, I told you that's the two that we're going to do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to... That gives you a space so you can see exactly where to paint. I'm going to put a little bit of white with a little bit of yellow. And I'm using the stencil brush, but you can use a regular brush. Okay, so that's done. Now let's go back and we are going to stencil the licorice. But first of all, I got to dry this. All right, so you stencil the white with gray. You stencil the body with the colors that you wanted. And so now you're gonna come back, right? And the second step that you do here, actually it's a third step if you see that you did that. All right, so I'm gonna come right back here and you line up the head. Okay? You line up the body, I mean, the whole body. Okay, now this is the magic. At Pinner's, people went crazy. That's all they wanted to do was this B. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up the B, uh, the 12, with licorice, okay? I want you to come right in here. And before, I used to have to tape everything up, but you don't have to now. See the leg, the antennas, the leg, right in here on top of all this. Oops, I went on the wing by accident. I got carried away. Okay, so look, right in here, the legs. Then we're going to come right in here. And we put the stripes in. Okay, this is my favorite. It is right there. Woohoo! Isn't that amazing? Look at all that detail that quick. I'm telling you, um, my daughter and granddaughter were using the butterflies totally wrong and they had no idea. They went, you're kidding. <laughs> That's all you have to do. So I just want you to see 
Let's look. Where's that butterfly one more time? Let's put a butterfly. Uh, okay. So let's put a butterfly with a little bit of this licorice. All right. So I'm getting the shape right here. I'm going to get all this edge out here. Circle, circles, circle, circle, all the way in here. Okay, so these are the black lines that you see on the butterfly. Okay. Oops. Okay. Now, what I, I'm going to put those pencil brushes in. What I'm going to show you now is that you can use these flash colors or you can use. Um, Okay. What do you call it? Ah. Here's that stencil I've been looking for to show you guys. That's the Easter one, or that it's in a stripe. Um, what I want to show you is we can come in with neon colors, and these you can get multi surface neon, which goes on glass and every other kind of surface. But make sure when you look online for it at our on onestore.com that you look, these are just plain neons for black light. And oops, oops, that was not ready. Okay, well, I'm not gonna use that color. <laughs> I didn't shake that. Um, and it's probably been in my garage. All right, so this one I wanna show you. I'm gonna come right in here. And this is like watercolor, which you can do watercolor. Okay. And so those are the neon purple, neon pink. We have yellow, green, and blue. See, you don't have to shade around like I did with the jar. I just want you to see. Okay. All right. And then we're going to come down here. I hope you're learning something. These stencils will make take you to another level as far as you're not going to look like everybody else who paints one stroke and brings it to the shows. You're adding a little detail to yours that makes it different. And like I do, come in here with the black and uh, fill those breaks in there if you want to. But I want you to see that I also come in here with the white and just dot it afterwards. You can use your kiss tool or you can use the corner of the brush like this. All right. All right. And we can put some yellow in here. Yellow is kind of transparent, so it goes in here easy too. Okay. So, look, you can stop right there, but I would add more black and more detail. Um, Lexi's butterflies. Can we make it this stencil with the big openings? That would be pretty stencil, too. Yes, it would be. Uh, but you know how hard it was for me to get Amanda and Mark to do, um, like, that Lexi stencil. It was the same size as mine. But she wanted to make it separate so she could do those different segments. Um, it's just if my daughter or Lexi would sit down and let me spend time with them. <laughs> um, but they they said nobody would buy two stencils. And you guys um, so blew, blew them away because you all bo got both. Of, they said nobody's going to buy two butterfly stencils. But I said, but this one's got dragonflies and side views. All right, but it worked. Y'all did. Okay, so now what I'm what I'm trying to show you on here is I'm gonna I drop my other. Okay, so I just want you to see that I'm picking up floating medium and I'm putting a wash of so you can do any acrylic color. And make it look watercolor like I was doing with that butterfly instead of using neon. But neon's got to have a color that pops. Okay, so I want you to see. 
okay, that that's what we do because then we need that on top of the stem. So see on top of the stem, so it looks like it's inside the bottle. Then I'm going to take and pick up white and I'm going to put a little bit. Oh, that's too strong, <laughs> but I'll fix it. Look, I'm going to come down this way or I'm going to come get some white. And take a little stroke across here, a little white back here. I'm going to put a little white on that bad spot. And I can come right back in here and take some of this off. Remember I told you, well, it's wet. You can come and still take some off. All right. There we go. All right. Did I inspire you? All right. So now what we're going to do is in here, I'm going to get my three-quarter inch flat brush. And we can do different flowers in there, but look how fun that jar is. And that stencil makes any of those glass bottles and jars do that. Okay, so now I want you to see that I'm going to come right here in between those two. Oh, I covered all my spot. Oh, right here. In between the two. Okay. I pick up more again, so I split it. Like I want one third white and two thirds pink, and then I'm gonna work it in again. And this time I'm not pushing so hard, but I'm working it in. Then I'm gonna pick up yellow. So I make like a piece rose, okay? So now what happens is I'm gonna come right here and we're just gonna go right around So we have some of the colors that we're using there. I'm going to dip pink, pick up white, and flatten it. So we can come around here. And my eyes are looking at the yellow edge. So if you spend that whole time with your eyes looking at that light outside edge, uh, I'm always inspired. You're so sweet. Uh, thank you, Miss Jennifer. I miss you. It's been a long time since we've seen each other. Okay, so I want you to see. I'm going to come right here. Then I'm going to come right here and chop it across a little bit. I'm going to come down a little bit more. Thank you, guys, for staying on. I'm having fun. It's changing my mood. <laughs> I've got some pretty 2024 workshop pieces of where I'm going to be in Tennessee, Florida. We need to work on Georgia, but Tennessee, Florida, and North Carolina. North Carolina's first. So we're going to be there, I think, in April. All right. We're getting ready to post all that information this next week. Okay. So I'm just coming in here right on top of the fern. I want you to see that I'm putting a little bit of that in there. Thank you. I love it. I had every year I went to the UK, but it's been a while think, before COVID. But um, love you guys over there. I have good, good memories of being on the shopping channel, QVC all the time. All right. So I want you to see that I'm picking up white and neon. Let's pick up white and purple. Okay. All right, so one of the things you can do is you can just tap, tap. I'm tapping and pulling. And see, I can go over the greenery. Picking out diaxazine purple, some worker white. I really messed this palette up. I got all kinds of colors in here. Okay, so... We're tap, 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 and we're pulling. So there we go. 
All right. And we can also put a little bit in here. What I like is to do things like we can do thistles. All right, so I pull the white out first. Then I can flip the brush and pull the purple out. See how it gets nice and fluffy? And then I can flip it again even and do some darker purple here. All right, so just little thistles. Same thing here. This is all chisel edge work, real simple, just like the fern and the leaves were. And then I'm going to take and flip the brush. And I love, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but I love doing my watercolor thistles with bumblebees inside of them. That's a, a video I have online that's so much fun on my website. Okay, so there we are. All right, I was just I'm just going for it, was it? I <laughs> one more thing. Let me show you one more thing. I kept saying, okay, so we're gonna put this in there, and so you don't see that out there anymore. So I think it needs more. So we'll just come in here. And we'll come right out here. But sometimes you don't know until you get all the other painting done if you're going to need more. See, I didn't know my rose was going to be so big. Right? And you can also, at this point, put a couple of leaves on top of the front of the jar. All right. All right, so one thing that you do have to do, guys, is we do one, two, three. So you have one at the peak tip, and then you put two, three, you do that triangle. And you can use all kinds of colors, or you can go stagger them like that and make it look like it's um, a vine growing. All right. So there you go. Now, did that inspire you to use stencils? I hope so. Where am I at? There we are. There. And I can go and shade and do more in here just like you can. But I have to tell you, um, you can see right through this the different details that are in that stencil that I gave you. So glad. Well, I'm glad you did too. <coughs> Wow, I've been on an hour and a half. <laughs> well, you can tell I was into the stencils. I showed you a lot in the beginning. And then I wanted to show you how I actually use these stencils. I've lost my liner so I can sign it. Um, but be looking. If you get a chance, I know everybody wasn't here from the beginning. If you get a chance, come back and watch and see how we use those in one stroke. So we have more of, more to make your painting just come alive. I use the mop brushes for the watercolor I meant to put in the back of this, but I didn't, so that's okay. See, we that, those mop brushes hold a lot of water and can just make a beautiful background. All right. Thank you so much. So you forgot the water line. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You just want me to work longer. <laughs> so, so we need a water line. Now, you see that I set that jar down on the table. Um, and so if we take floating medium and we pick up white even, that'll do it. 
but usually we do some kind of a blue tone. But let's see if this works. Now, what happens if you did this really right, you would put the waterline in the background uh, before the stems went in. But then you'd come right here. Let me wipe that off a little bit. And we would go just like this right here and make a little U and come across. See, I'm going to make a waterline here. But what I need to do is take it off the sleeve because we want it to look like the leaf is in front and the stem. See how I take it off? So that water line is just on the front. Okay, so we can go right here. There we go. See, it looks like it's sitting in water. So, and those little glares make it look like the light's coming through the window. I just did this and I went on top of my leaf, so I got to take it off the leaf. There you go. <laughs> what, Lucy? You can stay on all night. We are here for you. Well, thank you. I don't know. That was just fun. I enjoyed doing that with you guys. I hope you like it and I will share it and see you later. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right. Thank you.